In our organic or natural pest control segments, we have been talking about several ways to manage pests through a series of practices that have a tendency to fit together like a puzzle. We first talked about cultural controls, which are just practices like sanitation, crop rotation, or using resistant varieties that are done prior to and during the growing season. And then the next piece of our puzzle was mechanical controls using materials and practices that provide a barrier to protect the plant from the pest. And the examples in the mechanical control were some of the soap and oil mixtures as well as using covers like Remay or some of the floating row covers to actually keep the pest away from the plant. And then our third piece to the puzzle was biological controls which included naturally occurring bacteria, fungi, nematodes, etc., as well as beneficial insects to keep pest populations at a level that we could maintain and keep healthy plants and get production. And of course, we targeted the Bacillus thuringiensis products and talked about the new varieties or strains of that particular bacteria. Well, today we'll be talking about the last part of the puzzle, which is pesticides. Now before you tune me out for talking about pesticides in an organic segment, remember that many of our pesticides are plant derived and also from naturally occurring elements, thus making them considered or people think of them or classify them as being organic pesticides. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the botanical pesticides and those that are naturally derived. Now most botanical pesticides originate from plant materials across the world and some of these are, are pretty accessible that we can use in the home garden that I'd like to share with you are pyrethrins, rotenone, nicotine sulfate, ryania, sabadilla, phos hellebora, and neem. And we'll talk about each of these uh, individually. Pyrethrins or pyrethrums are probably the most commonly uh, used in the garden and are again considered organic and that's because they're extracted from the flowers of a species of chrysanthemum called Dendranthema grandiflora which is most commonly found in Africa and Ecuador so it's a cousin of some of the chrysanthemums that we grow in our own home gardens. Now pyrethrins are most commonly labeled for insects in the landscape and garden but also in the home and even on pets but you want to make sure you read the label once again for specific formulations and their uses. They come in ready to use sprays or liquid concentrates and they affect the insect by actual contact poisoning. Next is rotenone and it's an extract from the roots of the Darius plant in Asia and also cube roots from South America. It's for use on various insects, on vegetables and fruits, and comes in a dust or spray. But you also want to note that it's quite toxic to fish, so be careful around any of your water gardens or fish ponds. It is often used in combination with other botanicals, and it degrades very quickly into the environment. Nicotine sulfate is from a tobacco plant and is usually mixed with water for contact control of pests on ornamentals and some vegetables. It is a nerve toxin to insects and considered very toxic to humans, especially at the time of mixing and application. Ryania, or Ryania is the powdered stems and roots of a South American plant called Ryania speciosa. Again, it's usually found in a dust or liquid concentrate where it controls insects as a stomach poison on various vegetable and fruit pests. Sabadilla is obtained from the seed of a lily-like plant native to Central and South America. It has a label for vegetables, fruits, and flowers and also affects insects by their nerve cells. It degrades very quickly in air and sunlight and is wide spectrum but also considered harmful to honeybees. Usually is easy to find in a dust or wettable powder. False hellebora is probably one of the most unfamiliar ones, but it comes from the roots of a plant also called false hellebora. It's used as a dust or spray on insects and ornamentals and vegetables. 
and probably the most recently uh, seen in some of the mail order catalogs or at least in some of your magazines that you've been reading about is neem and it's derived from the neem tree as a Diracta indica that grows in arid tropical and subtropical regions in various continents. It comes in a liquid concentrate for a wide range of insects just on ornamentals. Now remember these are botanical pesticides thus usually making them considered organic and the main reason why they're considered organic is because they tend to be target specific, they degrade quickly in the environment and overall they're low toxicity humans and other mammals. Now let me also remind you of some other naturally derived products from the earth that are also sold in many various formulations. And these products are like liquid sulfur, wettable sulfur, lime sulfur, liquid copper, copper sulfate blend, and also Bordeaux mixture, which is a copper-related product. Now these products, again, are naturally occurring in the earth and are used primarily for diseases on ornamentals and fruits and also are considered organic. But we've talked about these products, and you may have heard me mention some are more toxic to humans at time of application. Well, how do we determine how toxic even a botanical pesticide is? Well, remember that pesticides are tested to establish the level of toxicity and dose necessary to produce a measurable toxic reaction. And that sounds kind of complicated, but the term associated with that measure is LD50. And it basically just ranks pesticides by their acute toxicity level. Now the main thing that you need to, do, to know about the LD50 number is that it's measured from zero up. So what that means is the lower the number, the more toxic or acutely toxic or orally toxic that particular pesticide is. And let me give you an example of some of the so-called organic ones in combination with some of the most commonly synthetic type uh, pesticides. For example, nicotine has a oral LD50 uh, of uh, 55 is the number. Rote known is 350, 7 is 500, aspirin is 1200, malathion is 1375, pyrethrins or pyrethrums is 1500 and just our regular salt is 3320 and sabadilla is 5000 so of all of those products listed some being organic some that are common products in the home and others that are synthetic pesticides you'll see that nicotine sulfate is the most toxic of all of those products because it has the lower number of 55 so my point is that just because a product is sold or considered as an organic product, it doesn't mean that you can get sloppy. And a lot of people do because they think, hey, they're safe. That means I don't have to worry about how I apply them and I can be very sloppy and just add more tablespoons or teaspoons than what's recommended. And that's not the case. As you can see, nicotine, again, is very toxic at the time that it's concentrated when you're mixing it. So even though a product is considered organic, you still have to read the label, you still have to wear protective clothing, and apply on the proper conditions, in other words, on days that aren't so windy. So again, just because some products are organic, they may be actually more toxic than synthetic. So that's why you need to do your homework, try to figure out the labeling, and usually that's based on caution, warning, or the cross and um, skull and the bones for the extremely toxic and again make sure that you follow all directions whether you choose to use synthetic products or organic.